Today on One. Hang on right there, Chris. I'll find a way to get you out. We'll introduce you to three new video games that are being developed by UCF grad students. You'll also hear what game testers have to say. Then, it may look and feel like a nature hike, but these students are helping to keep UCF's nature and urban development in balance. And later, home movies used to preserve history. All this and more coming up on today's show. This is One. And welcome to One, I'm Amy Rogers. Today we're going to tell you how those old home movies are being used in a program designed to preserve local history. We're also going to meet the new batch of UCF students as they begin to move in to their college careers. And we'll find out what are the most popular majors. But first, let's play some video games. Recently, we attended a play test at FIA, UCF's graduate school for video game design. Students were asked to come in and try out three new games that are being developed at the school, then give their feedback. Producer Ed Highland was lucky enough to tag along, and what he discovered wasn't just fun and games, but serious business. In the epic battle between good and evil, always remember, never trust the zombies. I know, right? Enthusiasts are taking on creatures of all kinds as part of a play test for new video game concepts. The designs, called capstone projects, have been under development by students from the Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy. We've been working on a project for six months now and we're trying to get play testers to come in, uh, find where the glitches are in the game, get feedback on the game, so that we can get a general idea how well have we been doing, what do we need to iterate upon, and how can we really bring this together. Three FIA teams didn't have to look hard to find UCF students willing to shoot, blow up, or otherwise eviscerate bad guys all in the name of fun, or I mean science. Behind the background, as each person is playtesting the games, we actually are running what's called metrics. So we can actually see like what inputs they're doing or how many times they do a particular action, maybe how long it takes for them to finish the playtest. And what we do is we can use that data along with a survey that they take at the end of the playtest to kind of get a big idea of kind of like what they thought of the game and actually how they were playing it. Hang on right there, Chris. I'll find a way to get you out. Thumbs at the ready, the adventure was on. In Nexus, you're exploring a mysterious city with hidden dangers everywhere. There is an extremely powerful energy source down there that they want to get their hands on. Dead West has you under attack by possessed carnival workers. And in Scarfell, your world is consumed by an evil darkness. If your torture drops, hit right click to pick it back up. Okay. And if you get grabbed by an enemy, shake the mouse. Oh uh, yeah, so I played uh, Scarfell. That was pretty fun. Um, I got a little bit confusing sometimes with uh, who I was fighting the enemies, but um, it was a pretty good game. Um, overall, I would definitely play it some more. The games have more testing ahead, and with luck, a shot at going head to head against the ultimate enemy. Other games in the video market. You can check out the video game trailers for all three games on FIA's website. Just head on over to FIA.UCF.edu, then click on the FIA videos underneath the Life tab. If you've been on campus recently, you'll know that we're always growing and adding new buildings. But did you know that one-third of UCF's campus is designated conservation land? Here's a look at how the campus is managing the balance between the need for expansion and maintaining our green space. Yeah. We're going to find the hottest areas around the campus and try to mitigate that heat flux by planting vegetation around that area. Basically taking 15 hobo monitor units which recorded temperature and relative humidity and we put them on various locations around campus. We engage students in projects where they actually contribute to how we develop and manage strategies for managing our natural areas here on campus. We try to minimize the impact of urban development on the environment. 
This is a good example, guys, of like doing the roots. Our department is responsible for all the grounds maintenance on campus. All about 40% uh, yeah. of the campus is actually natural lands and about half of that is conservation lands that are long-term protected. And all of that natural land, as well as the landscaped areas, are Elena Bernard's responsibility. She is the land manager for the Land and Resources Department at UCF. Elena works with staff and students to maintain the 800 acres of natural areas intertwined with an ever-growing campus. What we did is we looked at the water quality of these wetlands and tried to mimic them on our man-made retention ponds here on campus. There are about 12 retention ponds on campus um, and today we got to plant on the 2-H pond next to the stadium to provide some better quality for these ponds around campus. From the wetlands to the woodlands, another group was making some unusual discoveries. We monitored the number in, of invasive species or non-native species to the number of native species here in Florida. Non-native species uh, are defined as species from outside the country. What's it like when you come across right here on campus a plant that you otherwise wouldn't have thought would ever be here? I mean, it's got to be pretty surprising. When I come across like a population of 500 that are acres in size, it's a challenge. What are some of the plants here that you have found? Um, one here, for instance, is camphor. Uh, it's actually um, made with the camphor oil is used in Vicks Vapor Rub. Deeper into this wooded area, the last group of students were looking for some of their fellow residents on campus. In addition to setting traps in the wetlands, this group strapped a motion sensor camera to a tree pointed at a nearby bird feeder. And students caught a variety of animals living right here on campus on camera. We had a few birds. I had a couple of raccoons trying to get into the um, <laughs> bird feeder and then a few deer actually, a young buck. To better educate the community on the animals living among them, this group posted their discoveries online, including photos from their camera and bird calls. Through the student research, each group was able to get not only hands-on experience, but also help improve their community. But it was a really uh, good field experience getting out and seeing what's actually out here and getting to see the natural lands on campus. Yeah, success. Being able to participate in such a unique program really will leave a lasting legacy for our futures and generations to come. If you'd like to check out an interactive map where you can locate nature trails, campus landscapes, and see all of the managed areas covered by the Landscape and Natural Resources Department, log on to green.ucf.edu and click on Media and Outreach. Coming up on One, grab the popcorn, we've got an invitation to Home Movie Day for a slice of Americana and local history. Then come along and meet the incoming class of 2015 at UCF. We'll ask them about their hopes and their fears. We'll also find out what majors are the most popular. But first, let's take a look at some upcoming events at UCF and around the area. For those of you who grew up before video cameras, capturing family memories meant shooting them on 8 and 16 millimeter film. Instead of letting those old film reels gather dust in the attic, UCF's film department is helping to collect and preserve some of our most cherished memories to share with the community. The Riches Program of Central Florida is creating a home movie archive to ensure that valuable social and historical footage is preserved in a way that will allow these movies to last a lot longer. And it all starts at their annual home movie day.
Everything starts at home movie day itself when people from the community come in and bring their films and the people who come in will donate their films in some cases and we at UCF have promised them digital copies in exchange for their donated film. Mostly it's 8mm and uh, Super 8mm because those were kind of the home movie stocks and it was really easy to do and it was kind of the, the main home movies of the 60s and 70s. We load it up onto a modified projector. It has a, a bulb that's really bright but not hot like a normal lamp and uh, it plays it at a slower rate and kind of shoots it into a mirror which our cameras pick up and it ends up uh, taking a couple pictures of each frame and then the software puts it all back together in the end. I've always had an interest, a personal interest in home movies. They really take you into the past in a way that no Hollywood film, no professionally made giant narrative film can. They're very honest, they're very direct, they're unproduced, they're like snapshots. I think film and footage in general is uh, incredibly valuable, whether it's your grandmother's birthday or whether it's World War II. I think they come in thinking they're going to look at one or two of their roles and leave. They never do. They come into the room, they start watching other people's movies, and they become increasingly engaged in other people's films. And then when they're watching their own films, often they're brought to tears, they're very moved by it. Sometimes they're moved by something in someone else's film. What I think the most surprising thing to me was what living documents these things actually were. We have one a uh, roll of film that I think has, at least I counted, nine or ten launches from Canaveral, all shot from some guy's backyard. There's something very powerful about that. It's unencumbered by any propaganda purpose. It's just, this is what I saw from my backyard. It's literally a window into another time. The interesting thing about Florida is that you look around and so many people have, uh, have parents, grandparents who came from other places, so it's kind of like a mini, mini melding pot. People come to Florida for, for theme parks, for example, Orlando, for Disney World all the time, and uh, we have films of that in, in its early days. Americans are just now getting nostalgic for all of that, and I think it's a good time for us to be doing that. The historical value to Florida and to historians is we're putting this stuff in the right kind of cans and in the right kind of atmosphere where it can last a lot longer than it will in somebody's attic. If you would like more information as to how you can donate your home movies to the archive, call 407-823-2788 or log on to the Riches website and click on Home Movie Archive. Four short years from now, we'll be celebrating the UCF graduating class of 2015. But before then, this year's freshmen will be making decisions that will shape their professional careers and future. We asked them about their hopes, dreams, and challenges. Here's Maya Fialos with more. We have about 6,400 new freshmen who will be uh, joining us this year. We asked them to indicate an intended major on the application. And the five most popular are business, psychology, uh, engineering, nursing, education. I'm majoring in computer science. My major is business management. I'm doing nursing. Business management. Psychology. Biomedical sciences. Business. Early education and development, but I'll see what happens. Okay, we are going to the right. Today I'm here with my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, and they all came to drive me up and put me into my room. <laughs> We're kicking around. I'm feeling excited about starting college, a little bit nervous. I've been away from home before, but never really on my own like this. Facility operations, call that number and they can get the bed raised. Okay, so you just out. call them. Yeah, but now that this campus is big, there's a lot of people, so I just need to figure out what I like to do here and where I belong. I need a plug. Okay. Well, my brother is excited that he'll be getting my TV now. My sister's going to miss me for all my clothes and helping her get ready and stuff. I think my parents will miss me. My dad's very emotional, so I think it'll be the hardest on him. And he'll probably sit in his bed and eat ice cream for the next week. <laughs> my major is marketing, just because I like to interact with people and, and do business, the whole business type of thing. So business marketing is my major. Hopefully we can make some money doing that. 
My plan for today is just to move in and, and unpack all the clothes and just get organized. My sister, my mom, and my dad came with me. Um, it was a nice trip. My mom would probably be the most emotional person out of the whole group just because moms are like that. Here he is now in college. I remember when he went to Catholic school and he was off to kindergarten. and uh, It's been a great ride now. Um, thank God for Dwayne, who's a great father who has trained uh, a boy to become a, a man. He is very uh, gifted, very much a people person, a little socialite, and uh, so he'll do well. He'll do very well. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thanks for joining us for this edition of One. We'll see you next time.